Hey guys, it's me Jakey D. Welcome back to another Every Easter Egg video. We don't do these very often because they take a lot of work. But thankfully they are fun to do. And as with any of my Easter Egg videos, I have to mention that this is every Easter Egg that has currently been found and more may be found in the future. And this is also everything that I would personally call an Easter Egg. There are other Easter Egg videos out there that I don't necessarily agree with. If I did somehow miss something or something gets found in the future, be sure to let me know down below. Also a quick spoiler warning. If you don't wanna be spoiled, don't look up Easter Egg. And now we're gonna start off this video with what's easily the biggest easter egg in this game So just go where I go on the map You're gonna do a bit of climbing and then you will find a split in the wall That is basically invisible to the naked eye And then you're going to be going down this split in the wall for literally a couple of minutes And then finally once you reach the end You're gonna see some droids painting a model Mogu And if we have a look at those paintings you can see that they range from pretty basic to pretty damn good. People are saying that this could be a reference to the Titanic where Jack paints Rose. But goddamn, she didn't look that bad, did she? And thanks to the in-game photo mode, we can have a look around the room a bit more and you can find some self-portraits of the droids. Now these are actually pretty blurry, which is most likely because as everyone knows, the PC port of this game is a bit of a mess. So the images don't look great. And then next to that, there is just some random barrel with a golden spoon. I don't know if that means something. If you know, let me know down below. And then next to that is a speeder bike. And it has a little code on it as well. Again, I don't know if these are any extra Easter eggs or not, but if they are, let me know. I also wanted to mention that if you come here on the map and you jump over these rocks that you can lift up and then you go past this, I think it's a one of a kind dirty boggling. <laughs> Originally, there is actually an echo there and I can't pronounce this, but it's called the abominable boggling, which just shows that some people got scared of this dirty boggling. And then if you go past him, you're going to find another Mogu next to a legendary enemy called the Maya Terra, I think it is. And he is sitting in what looks like the same position as the Mogu that was getting painted. I don't know if that's just a coincidence or not, but I thought it was worth mentioning. The next Easter egg is in this location. And then you just follow the path that I took and then you'll get to this area where the ground will open up. So be careful not to fall in or you're going to have a very bad time. Now there is a beast in that hole called Ogdo's Spawn. And we'll talk about that in a second. But the first thing you're gonna do is pull in a couple of hammer dudes into the hole because they will fight Ogdo's Spawn for you and they'll try and get him to about half health. After that, you've got to jump in and hope for the best. All right, so if you played the first game, Fallen Order, you will know of the original Ogdo Bogdo. He is a boss that you can come across around the start of the game and he is famous for being incredibly tough so much so that he became a meme in the community. And I'm sure that he was the reason for many gamers giving up on the first game. So in this game, they've got Ogdo Spawn, which is a very nice detail. You get lazy for a second with this guy and you are dead. Mind you, I'm only playing on normal difficulty. For those that can beat this on the hardest difficulty, just don't talk to me. Now, after you finally beat him, it took me like 10 tries and he was only at half health. You will find the famous Poncho from the first game and you need to make sure that you get the echo that is on the frog because once you go back to Doma's shop there is another frog sense of foul presence no it couldn't be there's something here That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You unlock a fracture that allows you to verse the original Ogdo Bogdo and Ogdo Spawn at the same time. And there ain't no way in hell I am doing that. So good luck to you guys. I'm out of here. Well, screw you guys. I'm going home. Please, God, let it be forever. All right, I'm back. 
So in the first game, Fallen Order, your only clothing option was to wear a poncho. So a lot of fans requested it to be in the sequel. And now that we have found it, once you put it on your character, you can see that Cal gets very happy. <laughs> and this does not happen with any other piece of clothing from what I can tell. So that is a very nice little detail there. And if you look at the scoundrel jacket, it says a modest but striking jacket preferred by stuck up half-witted scruffy looking nerf herder and if we look at the hermit outfit this outfit is supposed to represent obi-wan kenobi's outfit in the obi-wan tv show as well as it has his shoulder pads on the back which are apparently from when he was a general during the clone wars which is another very cool detail you know what else is pretty cool? Apparently this game takes place the same year that the Obi-Wan TV show takes place. Now I didn't watch the TV show, but from what I can tell, I guess they're just on different planets. But a few people have noticed some echoes that sound an awful lot like Obi-Wan. I wonder if one must possess the force to enter these holy sites. These sands hold the wisdom of all those who walked them centuries ago. Remarkable. This was worth the journey, my friend. Now this could just be coincidental or it could be a hint that maybe the next game or season of the TV show, Cal and Obi-Wan might meet. Another connection is the hidden path. Known to some simply as the path, it's an underground network that worked to shelter Jedi and other force sensitives from the Galactic Empire. And the hidden path is mentioned during the Jedi Survivor story, and it's also mentioned in the Obi-Wan TV show. So it really does feel like they're setting something up here with these connections, and it will be very interesting to see what comes next. If you notice any other Obi-Wan connections, please let us know down below. Next up, if you come here on the map, you will find your best friend called the Rancor. You can actually find bones around the Rancor and you can throw them at him and they'll get stuck in his mouth, just like what happened in the movie. Next up, once you get up to this part of the map during a story mission, you can actually save a droid from death by force pulling him and then he will say this. Wait, do you hear that? Save me. And then he proceeds to try and kill you. But I thought that was a very cool little detail that I'm sure lots of people will miss. I'm also sure that there's plenty of other droid dialogues out there that could be triggered. Let me know down below if I missed any. Next up, you can find two of the famous XJ6 airspeeders. Now these are famous for that chase scene by Anakin and Obi-Wan during Star Wars Episode 2. And so this one is on Coruscant and the other one is on Kobo, right next to the pub thing and the ship. So you kind of can't miss it. Next up, during the story missions, you will come across the famous Rick the Door Technician boss. Everyone is calling him the hardest boss in this game and right so. What you might not know is that this can be seen as a reference to when Adam Driver, who plays Kylo Ren, did a skit on Saturday Night Live as a character called Matt the Radar Technician. So that's a nice little reference there. The next easter egg is a cameo of a very beloved character that you will miss if you don't do all of the bounty missions. So you can find out where the bounties are by talking to Cage in the cantina and she will tell you the locations of the bounties and once you finish them all, you then get a location to meet Cage somewhere. And once you go to that location, after a little while, the infamous Boba Fett will come as it turns out he has a bounty on Cage. And you can actually stand there and talk to Boba Fett for a while after he captures it. I know Jedi. I know what you are capable of. And I do not pity your fate. And you can actually talk to him for a couple minutes worth of dialogue. But if I showed all that, you guys will probably click off the video if you haven't already. So let's keep the ball rolling. Moving on to the next Easter egg. So if you come here on the map, you can find these couple of characters here. And once you talk to them, they'll go back to the cantina. And this will allow you to play the holotactic game. And this game is very similar to the hologram game that R2-D2 and Chewbacca play in A New Hope. Even though it kind of looks like they're playing like a chess version of it. 
it, where Hollow Tactics is more just a battle simulation version. Eh, but it's close enough. Also in the cantina, you can find what looks like to be a miniature version of Jabba's sail barge. Now it looks kind of similar, I think it looks a little bit different though, so it's going to be each to their own on this one. <laughs> The next easter egg is a reference to the first game where Grease is salting his food for a full minute and this of course turned into a meme. And so when you're playing through this sequel, you'll see Grease say this. Could you use some more salt? Too much salt is bad for you. You can also find Grease's infamous salt shaker in the ship, where in the first game you would normally find plants here, they've replaced it with items from the first game and one of them being the salt shaker. There's Grease's salt shaker. Where did I put the pepper? Next up, if you come here on the map, once you unlock a certain force ability, you'll be able to help this pit droid lift his ship out of the tar, and then you'll unlock an achievement that says, There is no try, which is a reference to this scene in Star Wars Episode 5. Do. Or do not. There is no try. And during that scene, Yoda uses the force to pull out a ship from the swamp in a very similar fashion. Speaking of achievements though, if you simply pat a bogling, which you'll probably do early on in the game, you'll unlock an achievement called, Can You Pat the Bogling? And a lot of people are saying that this is most likely a reference to Can You Pat the Dog Twitter account, which is dedicated to pattable animals in video games. So those two are the main achievement references that people have been picking up on, but I'm sure you can find some smaller references within the achievements as well. It's a trap! Speaking of boglings though, as you're playing through the start of the game, you'll eventually come to a point where you'll actually see some boglings jump up a wall. And people are saying that this is most likely a reference to the video game called Super Metroid, where a very similar thing happens. Next up are the sacred Jedi texts, which Carl comes across during the story. Well, people are saying that these Jedi texts might be the ones that also end up in Luke Skywalker's hut. But I guess really the only way to confirm that is to wait for future games and see if they somehow get connected. Now after you beat the game, a lot of new echoes will start to appear around the game and one in particular I found pretty cool. So when we last saw Denvik, he said this. Go on Jedi, do it, do it! Rather you than Lord Vader. And then once you go back to his office later on, you'll find this echo. It's you. The next easter egg is back at the cantina where once you unlock the DJ, people are pointing out this song in particular called Ebon Flow and saying that it could be a reference to a couple of things. One of those things being Even Flow by Pearl Jam and it could be a reference to Ebon Hawk which is a ship from the video game Knights of the Old Republic. Now if you're like me, you would have missed some small details when you first played through the game. For example, I never noticed that Grease is now missing an arm in the sequel. And that's because they literally never mentioned the fact that he's missing an arm. So apparently the only way to find out what happened to his arm is to read a book called Star Wars Jedi Battle Scars, which is a tie-in novel. But I'm not much of a reader and therefore it shall remain a mystery. Next up, there's a lot of graffiti and posters in the cantina, so I've translated these myself so forgive me if I made any translating mistakes. This graffiti says no way out. This poster says beloved Pyloon. So this cantina is called Pyloon Saloon and Pyloon is actually Grease's great grandmother. And next to that you've got Pyloon pin. So I don't know if that's like the pin or symbol for the Pyloon. And then you've got this poster which translates to gee kids. Now I don't know if I've just translated this incorrectly but if if this is right, ghee is a hard fat, so I don't know if it's just saying fat kids. <laughs> People are also saying that this poster is an image of the WA7 waitress droid, which is mainly known from Dex's diner in Star Wars Episode 2. Next up, when you go just outside of the cantina, you can find a character called Giddo. 
or is it Gaido? I don't even know how to pronounce these goddamn weird ass names. And his species is called a Trototomb? God, I can't pronounce this shit, man. Anyway, it's believed that he was put into the game because the only other Trototomb that we've seen was in Star Wars Episode 9. And his name was Claude, if I'm even pronouncing that correctly. And he was a mechanic somehow even though he's got no arms and there was a scene where everyone's hugging and kissing and there's this lesbian kissing scene where apparently it cuts the Claude's face afterwards and he has this very intense look about him and apparently this scene was taken out of the movie due to the controversy around it but he became a meme nonetheless Sometimes when you're in the cantina, you'll actually be able to see a character known as Orome Aizalo. And he was a Malbu bounty hunter who has appeared in the movie Solo and the TV shows Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett. He also has a pretty interesting backstory on how he was created around the sketch of Jake Lunt Davies, seven year old kid, whose name was Louis Lunt Davies. And Orome's name is a partial anagram of Louis's name. Now there are some some cool items in this game and we've already covered the poncho but we haven't covered any lightsabers and there are three lightsabers that are actually lightsabers from characters in the game. The first lightsaber is Seer Junda which you can get on the planet Jeddah towards the end of the game right next to your ship. Next if you come here on the map we need an explosive. So you just make one of these explosives follow you and this is going to take you probably a few tries because the enemies kept blowing mine up. But eventually we make it through a cave where there is a breakable wall. And once you break that wall, you go up to the chest and you will find Santari Kree's lightsaber. And the final lightsaber is back on Jeddah. Now for this one, you need to do three towers that have a puzzle. And the puzzle is just to get the ball to the top of each tower using your force abilities. And to find these towers, you can just talk to the shopkeeper as they'll tell you the rumor to each tower if you're struggling to find them. And then once you complete each of those three tower puzzles, you can go back to the shopkeeper and they'll tell you one final rumor, which will lead to the middle of those three towers. And once once you go to that last tower in the middle, you will find a lift that you can go down. And once you go down that lift, you will find yet again another chest with another lightsaber. This one being Eno Cordova's. Now we are nearing the end of our Easter egg hunt, but this is where I will mention things that I was on the fence about even mentioning, such as locations. We know this is set in the Star Wars universe and the locations are going to be in the Star Wars universe, but I guess it's worth mentioning how the planet Jeddah is the planet in Rogue One that gets blown up and how the galactic capital Coruscant, which was a key location in the prequel trilogy movies and has been seen in Andor and the Mandalorian, also makes an appearance here. And speaking of Coruscant, you can also see the Outlander Club, which Anakin and Obi-Wan visit. And speaking of that club, in the movie, they show Nuna Ball on the TV. And apparently around Coruscant, you can actually find signs of Nuna Ball, but I was actually unable to find them myself. So let me know if you can fare any better. Also speaking of Coruscant, you can find wanted posters of Cal and Cage, which is a cool detail worth mentioning, I guess. And now let's talk about some other cool details details in the game that I have not mentioned yet, such as the gatekeeper droids make appearances again. They are well known from the movies. This game also has idle animations like most video games. You can also hold down on the d-pad of your controller and sometimes you'll be able to fist bump BD-1. You can find a rumor that takes you to a big bird that you can ride on just like you did in the first game. There are some rumors that involve some other big creatures too, but I don't want to spoil them because they're not easter eggs anyway. The lightsaber noises change depending on the color of your lightsaber which is a cool detail.
when your health bar drops to red, BD1 actually flashes red as well. So he has like a health indicator on him. And of course, you can tell what difficulty people are playing on. In the bottom left corner of the screen, you'll see a dot. And you can see that mine is on the bottom right because I'm playing on the medium difficulty. There's five difficulties in this game. And the hardest difficulty will have two golden dots. So you can distinctively tell if a YouTuber is good at this game or not. Now, there are some very big voice actors in this game. And I wouldn't call them an Easter egg, but I think it will be fun to go through a few of them. And because they have voiced so many different characters, I'm just going to list off my personal favorite characters that they've played. So first up is Sam Witwer. Now he is just credited for playing additional voices in this game. So it'll just be small side characters, but he's known for Starkiller in The Forced Unleashed and Darth Maul in Star Wars Rebels and Clone Wars. Then you've got JB Blanc and he voiced Scuba Steve in this game. Now I'm a Naruto fan, so I'm going to be listing off the Naruto characters. <laughs> he's played Hiroko and Pakun in Naruto. And you've got Steve Bloom, who again is just credited with additional voices, but he's known for Orochimaru from Naruto. Then you've got Yuri Lowenth. Also credited for additional voices, but I heard someone say that he did voice Rick the door technician and he's known for Sasuke Uchiha from Naruto and you've got Matt Mercer once again credited for additional voices It's so annoying that they don't tell me the exact characters when they're small characters who's voiced Levi from Attack on Titan And that's just to name a few of the voice actors that are doing small characters But are known for big roles now This has been all of the secrets and Easter eggs in this game game so far that has publicly been found. Keep in mind that when it comes to finding legendary enemies and finding equipment and items, you can find most of these things with rumors. You just have to talk to characters so that they're really not that secretive. You can also find maps that will make all the items appear on your map. So there are ways to find all of these things that don't make them very secretive and therefore not an easter egg in my book. But hopefully this is the most detailed and thorough easter egg hunt on YouTube. YouTube, at least for now because as we've seen in many other video games some easter eggs aren't found for months or years after a game's release and I don't know if that's going to be the case here but it could be this video took me a couple weeks to make so if you guys appreciate the effort please leave a like subscribe for more and hell why not share with your friends while you're at it and I will see you guys in that next one